Hey guys, as you can hear, the uh, rattle coming out of the 6-inch electrodynamic loudspeaker from the night receiver in the mid-1930s. I'll show my setup in just a minute, but I'm generating a sine wave just north of uh, 100 hertz. And you can even hear a little rattle there as we approach uh, 200 hertz. Hopefully it's going to be a simple fix. I'm going to put some shims here around the uh, voice coil and the center pole piece here. So you can hear how I can stop the uh, rattle. For those that have followed my channel in the past, you guys have seen me do this before. I've got some strips of some 35 millimeter film cut. And uh, you can see I've got my first shim placed in here, not to go too deep, maybe about uh, one eighth of an inch or so uh, below the uh, center pole piece. And also uh, be aware, you can see the routing of the uh, voice coil wire here and here. I want to stay away from those. So I'll place the uh, shim itself here, another one here, and then another one here in the center of the uh, two wires. Hopefully I won't damage the uh, voice coil itself. A thinner product may be required as well. Again, it depends on the uh, gap itself between the center pole piece and the voice coil. And I'm going to try to uh, use what I have here. This one's a little wide, so I'm going to cut this in half and see again if I can place it here just between the uh, two conductors here for the voice coil winding. So I can tell by placing the uh, shims in here, just these three, that the cone itself is not perfectly centered. It's uh, tighter on this side with this shim, looser over here on this side. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, see, I think there's just a little bit of uh, glue left in this area. See if I can uh, actually shift the entire cone over just a bit um, so we can take advantage of this and make certain that we don't have any rubbing of the uh, voice coil against the uh, center pole piece when we're done. Let me see what I can do here. I'm going to go back in here and just kind of pry around these areas uh, that are loose and uh, see if, again, if I can shift this just a bit. Here's a wide angle view, and again, you can see the uh, cone is loose. Let me get another uh, strip of plastic, and again, I mentioned I'm going to use a, a white glue. Ideally, that wouldn't be the glue that I'm going to use, but uh, otherwise, I'm going to have a big mess on my hands. I can clean it up with uh, water and uh, try to place it in here underneath uh, this area and see if we can get this thing reattached. And then I'll go back with a bead of glue here as well, uh, where the uh, surround itself attaches back to the gasket right in this area. We'll let it dry, remove the uh, shims and do a repeat test and uh, hopefully we'll be successful. Okay, what I'm going to do to apply the uh, glue underneath the area or attempt to, just a piece of uh, transparency film. You can see how flexible it is and how thin. So well, let me just cut this into a wide enough strip that I can put the uh, glue in place. And then uh, again, try to force it up underneath uh, these areas. Okay, I think that's going to work. You can see I was able to force it underneath there. Again, the key will be trying to get enough uh, glue in place and uh, not too much so I don't make a mess of the uh, loudspeaker itself. So I'm just using some um, Aileen's Original uh, Tacky Glue. And again, you can see I'm just kind of going back and forth here trying to work the uh, glue underneath the area, not just around the outside edge. 
So you can see I'm continuing to uh, just spin the uh, loudspeaker around. Place a little glue here on the edge and again try to uh, lift everything up and get the uh, glue underneath the area. Bring you guys back just for a little update. You can see I'm getting closer here to uh, covering the entire 360 degrees of the uh, loudspeaker. Again, putting that little small bead down and then just slowly trying to work it in best I can. We'll see if it holds. Okay, it looks like I'm back to my uh, starting point. Let me just reinspect everything. Let me just try to press this down now. All right, let me get a uh, damp paper towel and I'm going to just wipe around the uh, edge to clean up any uh, spillover here to keep everything as neat as possible. Then uh, we'll clamp it again, let it dry, leave the uh, shims in place here around the uh, voice coil itself in the center pole piece. Let this uh, dry. is I'm wiping here as well on the old cardboard gasket. I'm applying uh, pressure to make sure we've got a, a good bond. And lastly, what I want to do here is just tug on the shims that I placed here and then just make sure they're still free to move and the resistance is uh, fairly equal. And then I mentioned I would probably go around the uh, surround and the gasket, put a, a real thin layer of glue. I'm gonna let this dry first and then reinspect this when I get the uh, clothespins off, acting as clamps, and uh, just reevaluate the need to do that. If I do, I'll use the uh, Aileen's glue watered down, not to create a lot of loading here on the uh, surround itself so we don't stiffen the cone so much. Okay, I've let this thing dry for about uh, four hours now. I think it still needs a little bit more, but I think it's at a point where we can do some testing. Let me uh, go ahead and pull the uh, shims out first. By the way, I put one extra shim in there, and you can see I used a, a piece of the uh, transparency film. It's actually uh, not as thick as the uh, 35 millimeter film, so I kind of put it in that uh, tight spot. Turn on the uh, signal generator. Again, I'm gonna generate a uh, sine wave around 100 Hertz. Let me uh, energize the uh, fill coil. Okay, no uh, rubbing now or buzz, rattle. at uh, 100 hertz or uh, 200 hertz. Turn the uh, signal generator off just for a minute. Get my fingers underneath here and see if I can uh, move the cone up and down. And it seems to be uh, moving uh, freely. No uh, rubbing or no resistance there. With the uh, center pole piece, that's a good thing. A real test to be when I get this back in the uh, receiver and uh, bring it up where we can drive this thing a lot harder and uh, see how it responds. Let's do that now.
You can see from my DC voltage uh, source, again, a low current source, uh, just under 11 milliamps for the uh, fill coil. I was using my uh, 18 volt supply from my drill.